Hello Floss Hey Floss Tube. Floss Tube. I'm Jen. I'm Renee. And I'm Emily. And this is uh, August 17th, 2019. Floss Tube number three. It's our uh, channel about cross stitch and other needlework. We are in Santa Rosa, California. I'm here for a visit. I had Jen's kids uh, for the summer and Jen was able to spend some time in Alabama. You probably saw our video last month. And today we're um, just gonna talk about our my visit here and uh, some of the things oh, that one did. of the things that we did was the <laughs> Winchester House. Oh, so. And it's in San Jose. And uh, Emily, you wanna talk about it? If you go to the Winchester House, it's like you have to have a tour guide or you will be lost in the first five minutes. Well, first of all, what is the Winchester House? It's Winchester Mystery House. Well, um, it's about a lady named Sarah that um, her husband created the Winchester Rifle and she was afraid, she's paranoid about um, the, if the ghost of the, of the people that were killed by the Winchester rifle would haunt her. So she built a house that went on and on and she never stopped building. Why does she not stop building? Because she's paranoid about it so the ghost will get confused. And she thought that the noise, the noise, she was told by a psychic that the noise from the construction would help drive the ghost away. So I have some thoughts, comments you want to share on that? Um, well, she had a staircase that would go nowhere and all these little extra doors with you'd open it and there'd be no room just you know continuous construction to um, keep the house noisy where the ghost would stay away but <clears throat> I guess she has a thing about the number 13 like the panels there'd be 13 <laughs> Um, like she had one, a few windows that looked like spider webs and it would have 13 pieces of glass in it and, and on Friday the 13th they have um, flashlight tours that would be very interesting. Um, There's a picture, she treated her employees very well, she paid them over the minimum wage and um, I guess they lived there at the on the grounds and there's a portrait of all the people that you know worked um, gardeners and there's one gardener that was wearing a pair of overalls that people say that they see sometime they call them the wheelbarrow ghost and I guess he's seen in the basement sometime and um, one lady said she was a clairvoyant and she to told the tour guide like at the end that you know there's a ghost that looked fit that description followed them all the way through but she didn't want to say anything and distract them from, you know, giving this guided tour, so. Another highlight of our week together was going to see. One. One. You might be thinking, well, did they, if they, it, it's not a cartoon this time, it's a. It yes. looks real, but it's not real. Another highlight, since uh, Emily had a birthday recently, we went to Six Flags. She's got a photograph that she wants to share from her visit to Six Flags. So this is me, oh, me and my dad on the Medusa ride at Six Flags. It, we were making weird faces at the camera. Okay. It was very, very hot, yes. and, but the good thing about it being hot is there, there weren't a lot of people there, so we rode some rides, you know, twice in a row, no lines. We actually, in Floss 2, number 2, mentioned that we were going to tack this show on to the end of, the, or talk more about our whips, our stitching, and um, our haul from the stores that we visited, but uh, it was incredibly hot. The temperatures were over 100, which I'm from the deep south and we're used to extreme heat. 
but the difference is there it's always hot and we run our air conditions year round i mean even in december so everyone has air conditioning and in northern california it's not always necessary in fact it's usually cool when i come and the first day i arrived it was very comfortable it was a great relief from the heat back home and uh, that lasted maybe a day or two we even joked that we were going to try to broadcast in the car <laughs> in the car because we could sit in the air conditioning well, we rented this house as in february and i just saw the vents on the floor and the thermostat in the hallway and there's no such thing as a house without air condition in alabama or a car yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so after we rented the place and moved in, my husband's like, you know, this place doesn't have air conditioning, right? And I'm like, what? And he's like, that thermostat, that's for the firm, furnace. And so, you know, everybody told me it's going to, it'll be okay that we just run the air condition maybe, you know, one time during the summer. And a lot of people say that they don't have air condition. So, but this past week has been the hottest I've been since I've been here. We've been here two years, and last summer we were in an air-conditioned apartment, but it did get pretty uncomfortable. Anyway, had a great time, and of course, stitching was a big part of our weekend. We stitched, I think, what, every day? Did we stitch Tried every to. day? Tried to stitch every day, or do something stitching-related, um, getting ready for our retreat some of the retreats that we're going to uh, this fall and beginning next month. And um, of course we had pilgrimages to a couple of needlework stores. And if you watched our last video, you know that we, we uh, went to Threads Entwined, which is just about 20 minutes away from Jen's house and um, we went and visited Trish about three times. <laughs> yeah. And she's such a sweet person. And uh, we realized the last video we did, one reason we didn't tack on, in addition to the extreme heat that day, um, and us trying to find a cool place to do that, um, to do this, to put everything out, and to talk uh, without fans and air conditioners and that sort of thing going that... Um, um, we were just having some sound issues. In addition yeah. to threads and twine, we also we do uh, every every time that I come, Jen and I make a trip to Alameda, which is about what an hour and about an hour and a half. Hour and a half, and um, where is it? It's south of here or East Bay or North Bay. And so it's um, quite a drive and you go through when you get kind of around San Francisco and some of those bigger cities, then the traffic can get kind of hairy. It's towards Oakland and Berkeley and all that. But um, we'll, talk about, uh, we'll talk about what we got at the stores there and we'll save that portion till the end of, to the end of our video. For those of you who aren't interested in our haul, but um, we'll we'll come back to that at the end. And um, but for now, we'll do we'll do our whips and and some of our finishes. But we'll start with our. I still whips. haven't finished my stitch con whip because I've been <clears throat> working on a retreat project which I just finished today, but I can't show it. Um, I'll have to show it after the retreat. Um, this is a prairie schooler. Uh, Emily's going to uh, help. She wants to be Kefren. Um, if you watch Deb and Kef, uh, of course, if you've seen our other videos, you know we're crazy about them. Snow. And we're actually going to their reception. Uh, reception. Their re retreat. Snug Harbor Crafts. Snug Harbor Crafts. I think it's Stitch Love West. Love those ladies. Okay. Stitch West. We will be there. So I've gotten a big portion of that done. And I know I'm supposed to mention the, um, that's on 28 count, Ivory Lugana, No Place Like Home, Prairie Schooler. Okay. So that, and I have some finishes. Uh, this is, um, can I go ahead and show that? Yeah, All right. sure. 
-hmm. Holly Jolly Holiday by Heart and Hand. Uh, and this is on some fabric I got from Trish at Threads and Twine, 32 count, uh, French roast, R&R. &R. I'm gonna make that into a small Cute. or an ornament. Did you consider putting it in that kind of crop? I don't yeah. know who makes that crop, but that's it's kind of cute. I saw one that acorns and threads, not acorns and threads. Um, <laughs> um, needle and needle haystack. Needle and haystack, but I should have gotten it. That's a Lizzie Kate um, snippet. Cute. Now, how long did it take you to stitch that, Gina? Uh, just a few days maybe like an hour or so a day or less uh, this is a country cottage needleworks land that I love I know it was a stitch along with um, Priscilla and Chelsea <laughs> but I think I finished it like right after 4th of July show the title baby hold it down just a little bit there you go and I forgot forgot the fabric <laughs> And I'm going to try to do a Priscilla finish. Um, we'll see. All right, that's all. Okay. Um, Emily, you want to go next? Me um, too. Okay. So. Make sure you're on camera. Oh. Hi. You need to come sit first. Okay. Um. So whips first. Whips first. Okay. So my first whips. What? Hold on. I'm gonna start with this one. First whip is called. Let me speak up so they can hear you. It's called a uh, doghouse of puppy of puppy dogs. Right. Lower it so they can see the title. Mm -hmm. Bent Creek. Is it Bent Creek? Yes, it Bent Creek. Okay. And then here is what I have so far. Oh, puppy dogs. That looks like, is that? I can't remember what kind of fabric that she, is. She does um, some on Ada, but that's actually stitching over two threads. My second um, whip is called Ghosties and Ghoulies by Lizzie Kate. Cute. And that is a brand new, is that brand new? I don't know. Oh. Is the Tingles part of the Tingles series? She got a little start on that. That she just got that pattern about a day ago when we went to Needle and Haystack. No, no, no oh, that was at Trish, uh, Trish's um, no, threads, and twine. threads and Twine. Okay, and finishes. Here's one of my diamond paintings. She's doing some diamond diamond painting. She also did a little black cat. It was cute, but um, I was cleaning and I don't oh, know what I did with. My first finish <laughs> that I ever had was her very first finish. Cinderfall. Cute. Teddy bear with me. That was her very first stitching project. I got that yes. off of Amazon. Oh. I think it was like seven dollars as a magnetic case to hold your needles and supplies where you don't puncture your bag or anything. Okay. All right, and you want to show them your. I don't know what it's called. Bitsy Bob. It's a Bitsy Bob. Oh, and, it's by um, That's So Kelly. Yeah, this spring I gave Jen and Emily one. And of course, I got one for myself, but this was a special or limited edition from Kelly. And see, the little bunnies are fuzzy, so they hold your threads. He's got a little pouch down here. And I'm sure you hear their dog little nails clicking on the <laughs> clicking on the floor. She's licking my hand right now. <laughs> we look distracted now and then. Anyway, <laughs> look distracted every now and then. She may be under there, but um, you know, if you have a pet, you have to be very careful. In fact, can I show what I'm stitching? In fact, uh. Dixie, as her dog, uh, enjoyed half of one of my magnets on my magnet board. So, so you have to be careful. This and, is the type of needle I'm stitching um, ghosties and goalies with. Oh, 
what fell. It's it's a, it's a ball tip needle that I got from um, Threads and Twine. Okay. I, I tried those and I love them. Um, it was with the dark fabric and it was easy to, I don't know, it's like the hole just sucked the needle in. So. All right, and that was your finishes and whips and mine. Um, I have one finish to show. It is, it is morning walk and it's a scarlet house pattern and i think it was a new release at market in march and i stitched this for jen's birthday which was in june so <laughs> i'm a little late getting it done and i'm going to try to finish it myself because i don't have a finisher but i altered um i altered the pattern because she just wanted Dixie in there. She didn't want two dogs, she wanted one. And I changed the color of the dog to be the color of Dixie, which is kind of silvery gray. And I put 2019 in the spot where the other dog would have been. And um, not ironed. Maybe next time you see it, I will have pulled the my new um, Vana recommended sewing machine out and learn to sew a square and stuff in the sawdust. Maybe next time it'll be finished. Maybe next, maybe this, maybe you'll have this by Christmas, Jennifer. <laughs> anyway, um, the other whip, the whip that I have, um, actually Jen had another finish and I, it's a whip of mine. We just received the pattern or the kit for, um, the retreat that's coming up next month actually in about three weeks it's chelsea and priscilla's um you want to talk about that jen right, it's the <clears throat> arkansas by lula right, right lula may lula may excuse me um it's a retreat in arkansas and it's the stitching queens of halloween is the name of it and it's a smaller retreat there's two um two weeks worth of it split you know down the middle 30 in each group and we're in the second group so we're looking forward to that really excited about that and so a lot of the time this past week we spent just mm -hmm. there are a lot of activities um that we have the opportunity to participate in and so we were kind of pulling things together for that so we could participate in, in everything hopefully but um that's next month and really excited about that so anyway i'm jen just finished hers today mm -hmm. we can't tell you about we can't tell you about it or show you because we've been asked not to do so not to show it on social media um and can we say who the designer is I don't know. Well, maybe when we get it finished, we'll show it after the retreat. After it's finished, um, Priscilla. Whenever they tell us we can, yeah, <laughs> share that we will. So I'm still working on mine. Uh, it's a good bit of stitching in it, and we did just get it. Maybe what? Maybe two weeks ago. And uh oh. And um. So that's one, and also working on some smalls. And one thing, this is one thing I'm going to start next, and it is um, one for the crow. It's a uh, Brenda Gervais, and uh, I think it calls for 40 count, and which is what I typically typically uh, stitch on uh, 40 count linen, but. It's, this pillow looks small, but it's actually quite large for a pen pillow. And I want it smaller than that. So I'm gonna stitch it over one. And um, same for this pen pillow. They're both pen pillows. This one's slightly smaller. And I'm hoping if I've calculated correctly that this might make a nice little my, uh, fob. So, I'm going to try that. Do you want to show that closer? Hey, Mama. Oh, no. Okay, put her down. There we go. 
There we go. So you got to show the title. There you go. All right. That's good. And let me show that thing. Um, other. Oh, let's see. Other ones that I plan on starting. Uh, another one. Actually, there were two of these. They fell out of my lap. Here they are. These are two that I plan to start soon. And then I have to get the finish getting kitted. They're both Brenda Gervais and they're the oval. I've ordered the paper mache. Okay, she's showing the thread. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. That didn't seem and then the other one. Same color threads. Okay. And this was Trisha's idea. She gave us these little rings to put our threads on. Okay, we can show the next. All right. And um, I did want to show my bags because I love project bags. They keep my, help keep the stitching clean. And Okay, baby, I'll hand it to you in a minute. Um, this is a specialty uh, piece from Kelly. This is a, a Bitsy Bob and it's a Happy Stitcher. And again, it keeps your you can keep your threads here and pick it up in a hurry. And I also like to load a lot of needles. I usually buy needles, uh, the John James Petites, and I get about a hundred at a time and I just load them all up because I don't like spending all the time to constantly switch thread through one needle. So you just put the symbols down here and then you stick your needles in the sponge and it's got extra papers for you to swap out whenever you swap your projects. And then I just wipe them out when I'm done. And I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna pass it to Emily so she can show you up close with the front. And that's Emily with her first stitching project. That's when I first taught her to stitch. I think it was I think. the summer thing. I was working on the watermelon. Yeah. And then- I never finished it. <laughs> and then this is uh, Mama Joan. Um, that's um, Halloween bag. And don't show the other side because it's got a pattern. All right, and then the matching accessories bag. So I got that probably last year. It's still it's, no, got. Love her bags. Has a clear love pouch. Mama Joan. And uh, that's all that I have to show right now. Um, most of my whips are back home, and I'm a lover of large projects and I love silks, and I wouldn't dare haul those across the country. Um, I had a bad experience where I thought I lost some um, before when I was working on the Village of Hawk Run, and that was scary, and that taught me. So I just usually travel with smaller pieces. And um, that's all the whips and finishes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our haul, and we hit two two needlework stores. Trish, you want to try with Trish? Lots of haul, y'all. Lots of haul, y'all. So we're going to be here a little while talking about our haul if you're interested in seeing that. Can I start? If not, then we'll see you um, next time. Uh, I don't know if I'll put up a video by myself. We don't know how to how we want to organize when we do one together, but Jen and I will be doing one uh, when we attend the retreat with Priscilla and Chelsea uh, and Leela May. So can I start with in Arkansas? That I got from Trish. Okay. Trish yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So me and my mom both got some needle miners uh, from her. Um, right here, made out of clay. And who were those by? Ming. House of Ming. House yeah. of Ming. House of Ming. And they're actually, what are they made of? They're oh. made of clay. So. It's kind of got a glare, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really close to the light. Okay. Very strong magnets. Okay, thank you. And All then, right. Um, the first day we, I went, I got this one. 
Okay. Plum Street Sampler. It's Llama Lump. She sees a reflection in the window. And this one is still Plum Street Sampler. It's called Tired Trio. And what are those? Sloths. Sloths. <laughs> okay. They are cute. Um, I'm trying to think. Yeah. 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 That's everything from Trish. Oh, and from I also got the ball tip needles from Trish. And ball tip needles from Trish. Okay. And do you want to, do you want to, okay, we're going to just cover what we got from Trish all the way around? Um, or do you want to show? Okay. You can go on into Needle in the Haystack. Go ahead. Okay, Needle in the Haystack. In Alameda. That's nice. So. So the first one I got quite a while ago is, the it's Lizzie Kate Summer Basket Snippet. Okay. Um, and he, another Lizzie Kate that it says dreaming is free, believe in miracles. And then there's these two. This one's called Vows and Jack's Jinx. And that's what is that stitched on? Paper, right? It's perforated paper, yes. And that is by the same designer as the last thing that you um, stitched um, back here over my shoulder. Just Another Button Company. Okay, by Just Another Button Company. That's and this so one's called Vows Blooming Kitty. Okay, and that, yeah, it's the same. Just Another Button Company, same as that design back there with the cupcake. Is that it? Oh, what do you have here? Oh, this is the bag my mom let me borrow for um, the ghosties and ghoulies, I think. Came right. from StitchCon. They were selling them at StitchCon, and it is? It is Gay Ron Totem Bags. Gay Ron, Gay Ron Totem Bags from Sunshine Stitchers. We had a blast meeting Gary. We talked about that in our first loss, too. And how many bags did you buy from them? <laughs> I don't a ton. I, I love a project bag. I just love project bags. And if you go to my Instagram chant, uh, Instagram page, what do you call that page? I don't know. Um, it's Gazelle's Needlework. You'll see um, you'll see some of my um, my bags and and so forth. I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, um, I guess I'll go over my stash, and this is my magnets. Now, these are not all for me. These are these will be gifts, primarily some, gifts. Some of of course, one for me, but also gifts for their Christmas and Halloween and mermaids. mermaids. Tilt it that way. It's got a glare. Hold it back from the camera, baby. It's too much light. There we go because it's kind of washing them out. So cute. And those, again, came from Trisha's shop, Threads and Twined. And I got, um, let's see, patterns that I got from Trish are, this is new, the Boo, Boo to You. And then another spy design by Brenda, Brenda Gervais yeah. with our needle. Here's another one. Brenda Gervais. It's called Winter in Winter in Baltimore. It's part of a series or several of these. <clears throat> and then we have another. Uh, I believe this is with that needle. Yes with thy needle and thread. It is basket full of winter time with the threads that are on the loop hanging there. Again, Trisha's idea. And 
This was uh, one of, this is Eleanor Farrow, 1842, Shakespeare's Peddler. It's a uh, Teresa Bennett. And she actually had this hanging just inside the door of her shop. And I really hate that I didn't get video of it because that does not do it justice, the photograph. The colors are just gorgeous. They have a lot of fall colors. So this would be a great project to start in the fall. And um, I got a uh, Blackbird Designs, whenever I see it, I buy it, whether I think I'll stitch it anytime soon or not because they get scarce. But these are um, Reward of Merit pin cushions, and I'll let Emily show those. What are those, Emily? Can you read them? Um, this is Patchwork Pumpkin by Blackbird Designs. Okay. Good little fall piece. And this one is Small Token by Blackbird Designs. And more Blackbird. This is Lady Liberty. It's a, a drum. And then this book, I can't, I couldn't remember if I already had this or not, but I erred on the side of having one too many. And I could always give it away if I find out I have more than to one. To me. To you. Okay. You'll be first in line. And the other thing that I was excited to get from Trish, she showed me some new fabric she had in. Um, most people know about Beach Brew from R&R. &R. This is a 40 count. And yeah, it's a whole yard. And that's rare to find a whole yard when I order online, as I have to do because I don't have a needlework store. Are you going to put this on there? Um, that actually would be a phenomenal color for this. Um, but I'm not going to because it's so rare to find a whole yard, especially since I have to um, order it online and most of the time they have it cut into fat quarters. And there are a few places, uh, I know Teresa, sometimes you can request to buy multiples and they won't cut up the fabric, but Trish as well. Um, so I got a whole yard and I love to do um, I love to do the um, um, big samplers, like hands across the sea samplers, and um, look for my notes. And um, hers are so large. Um, Lord, I was trying to think of Nicola Parkman's name. Anyway, I love everything Nicola does. Um, she and the people at um, Hands Across the Sea. But you have to have enormous pieces of fabric sometimes, and it requires a special cut. And I have waited as long as a year to get a piece of material large enough and in the right color. And it's so difficult to do when you don't have the fabric to look at and to throw the throw the you know the um, threads on there. And one thing that Nicola will do is give you like a DMC equivalent of a color. Problem is, you gotta have the DMC and the fabric in front of you to try to match up the colors. And if you're ordering online, that just doesn't work. But that's where it's uh, a local, a real brick and mortar shop comes in handy. Because you can call someone like Trish or you could call Kathy at Neela in the Haystack or one of her staff members and ask them to help you out. So, but there's nothing like doing it yourself and being there and because everyone has his or her own taste and anyway glad to have that large piece of fabric and this is a new r and r fabric called 18th century blackbird and she had um trisha just gotten in this piece mm -hmm. and this looks like a fat quarter here it's pretty. um but i love to do prim pieces and this would be a great prim color. This is 36 count and I'm going to ask Emily if she'll just kind of walk up there and show that since that's a new color. Anyway, it's getting washed out. Hold it back baby and see if it because that's just really washing it out. That's not helping. Here let me see. 
if I hold it halfway in between. Probably more like that. Okay. And then we have, uh, there's some ornaments. We saw at Stitch Kind, there were ornaments, uh, particularly the Prairie Schooler, mm -hmm. Prairie Schooler Santas, Santas yeah. um, that were stitched over one on 25 count. So I picked up 25 count and 28 count mushroom lagana and i want to point out the color the difference in color is both mushroom lagana but just the difference in the thread count um results in a different color somehow but that happens and that's also why it's really good to see the thing see it in person so um, when I went to Needle and Haystack, what I looked for, um, they have an extensive collection of threads and silks particularly. And so I usually pick up silks when I'm there for projects that um, I've been holding on to. I actually picked up one and swapped out four silks because I wanted to use a different thread count, a higher thread count, and I only wanted to stitch with one thread, um, and I went for kits, and I was particularly looking for smalls, things that would be good for in exchanges and that sort of thing. But I thought this was adorable. They had, this pattern is beach, it's noteworthy needle, beach bucket. And it's another in the Rusty Bucket List series. I have not heard of these. And Emily's going to give you a better shot of that. And thank you, thank you sweetie. All right, and then uh, here's the pail. And what I did... Um, like I said, I swapped out, you stitch a little ram around it, and I switched out the fabric to a light mocha 36 count, and I pulled all the, they had really kind of beachy, faded colors that were, um, for the design, and I pulled, I think most of them were, what, weeks in sampler threads, is that what they were? Anyway, I pulled those, and since I was in a real needlework store and had all the threads in front of me, I decided I wanted to do silk so I could use one strand, and they're beautiful, and plus they just feel so good, and I wanted to treat myself to it. And I picked up several of these buckets, um, some for gifts, and um, of course one for myself, and they should be really quick and fun. There they are. They feel so nice. And other kits I picked up. Uh, this is a Stitcher's pen spool. This is my lady's needle. And here's what the, it's the whole kit where you can do the pen cushion. It even includes the pens. And here's the spool. Emily, do you want to show it? We lost Emily. You want to show? I love my lady's needle. I've got several whips <laughs> with the, her designs yeah oh, oh, oh that's blown out you got to hold it back 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 okay that's not gonna pick up you, see, you can't see it back, okay back. it's too close and here's another this is a uh, christmas ornament design nope if it get it too close you can't see it at all baby you got to back up there you go so really cute Love the spools, and that is um, primitive hair. If you want to hold it back some little, just thought it'd be cute and very reminds me of the holidays. Okay, yeah, and then oh, I didn't, I forgot with my beach pail, I also picked up several of these Rivaris. Um, little keychains or they may be thread keeps but it has all the little 
embellishments here. Everything to do it except for, may not have the threads, but it has everything else. But I picked up several of those and there were a couple of designs. But the little seahorse, and I thought that would be fun to include with the bucket. And um, I picked up a couple of, uh, well, let's do this first. This, when did this come out? This is a brand of Gervais. It's an ode to the Ort. And at StitchCon, someone had stitched this, actually made this into a fob. It's a little metal can. And you put the design on the top, which is a little Ort can. And um, I picked up Jen had picked up one from Trish, and we saw them again at Needle in a Haystack. And just, if you're looking for this, there are still plenty of these. I think this was a market exclusive. I don't know if it was from this year or last year. But if you want one, I think Needle in a Haystack had probably, probably, yeah, quite a few. Probably at least six, five or six left. And, um has a little strawberry and he's going to show you the picture it's so it's stitched over one so i'll warn you if you're not an over one person i mean you could still stitch the pattern thank you but um it's it's actually designed to be another one and then here is I picked up a couple of these. These are Annie's Armchair Needle Nannies, and this came from Neelan Haystack. I know you can also buy these on Sassy Two Stitch Online, which sells needlework tools. Um, they're, I will tell you, they're pretty pricey, but if you want to treat yourself or a gift for a good stitchy friend, then this would be a nice gift. And then um, a couple of just kind of inexpensive fobs, holiday fobs. One, one for Halloween and one for Christmas. That's right. And those are praiseworthy stitches made by pra praiseworthy stitches. And that came from Neil and Hayes. So <laughs> this is stuff I picked up at uh, Threads and Twined with uh, Trish um, Holiday Hoopla, Brenda Gervais. That's a new Halloween one. Oh, do you want to show what, um... She's got threads you, on You there. stitched me once. Um, that's okay. And this, this is a new pattern too. And I got this fabric to put both of those on. Oh, it's like dark green, so it's like better back there. Yes, real pretty green. <laughs> it's similar to the one on the pattern okay but it's not it wasn't the call for this on the pattern and uh, let's see I think there's 10 of these little prairie schooler card packs with the little smalls this is got a little crow you want to show these Emily yeah I think it's a pack of 10 Ooh. for like $9. Sorry. Something like that. And there's several different card packs with, I don't know, like fall themes. That's holiday. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> and this came from? That was... Um, at Trish's, Trish's. Um, okay. Threads and Twine. Threads and Twine. I'm not sure how they choose which cards go in which pack, but they had a variety. And I'll put links to uh, Trish, Trish's shop, Threads and Twine, and also uh, Kathy's Needle in a Haystack. I'll put links to their websites. And this is a new Autumn Whirly Gig. 
I stitched the summer and it was uh, really fast and yeah. fun. I think I told you I bought a pack for me and a pack for Emily, the um, Sullivan's Easy Glide Ball Needle. I like those because I stitched it on this dark fabric and it was really easy. Um, Dusk. I really like this color. And this is a picture of this plus called Mirage that's really pretty. It's kind of a blue. I like that. Can I show one of your finishes? Okay. Hold on just a second. Let me finish, finish my thoughts. And got this. Um, I'm kind of lacking on the fabric, so I just try to add to my fab fabric stash. This is um, raw silver Belfast. It's got the opalescent. I think a lot of people are doing the glitter village on that. Um, gonna make sure Renee doesn't take this back home oh, no. with her. I love that. And then I think we both got. Um, I think these are mushroom lugana. Lugana. And so. And I got one of the little kits too. The Brenda Gervais or to the Ort, like Renee just showed you. Okay, so that was from Threads and Twine, and I got lots of floss. So pretty. Lots of fancy floss. And I cannot make a French knot for eyeballs, so I got some little glass beads. I <laughs> cheat and do that too sometimes when it calls for French knots, just because I just like. So on the bead sometimes depends on what it is. And I got a few <laughs> things from Needle and Haystack. I I got some I won't show you the brown perforated paper or wait, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Uh the Lizzie Kate little sleds to make an ornament. A little sled. Uh, I got myself a Halloween scissor fob. Scissor fob. Back baby. I'm trying. And Got a couple of little witch patterns. This was a little kit, well, partial kit. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> and this uh, Waxing Moon Designs Witches Brew Pub. And this previous one was, do we say Needle Bling Designs? Get your witch on. And I bought this in mine for the um, Scary Apothecary. The opalescent fabric. It it's it's going to be real, real sparkly. There you go. You can see the sparkles coming. Uh, so that's just some uh, opalescent even weave Lugana 28. And I got some chronic for the scary apothecary ornaments. And I just like this. I figured it would be a good good color for some Halloween oh, that ornaments. makes it look oh, more yellow. <laughs> it's orange. It's it called, looks yellow. Um, and it's like pump, a bright pumpkin. orange. It's called yeah. pumpkin. It's the color of a pumpkin. And it's just a, uh, it's an Ada. I figured Emily might could make a little Halloween ornament too. So that's it. Uh, and um, I wanted to point this out. Emily wanted she asked before we left Alabama. She asked me if if she could have a quilt. I have um, I call it a junk teaks booth. I have an antiques booth and um, a little consignment booth and a local antique store. And so I have lots of goodies in there. And um, I've I've had a number of quilts and. And this one behind me, I did not stitch this. This is actually vintage from 1930s, 1940s. And the pattern is called Drunkard's Path. And she, she liked it because it had some kind of girly colors in it. Um, well, it's a little on the pastel side and um, she wanted to bring kind of a lightweight quilt home. Uh, well, back to California with her and so so we we picked that one up out of my shop so and i don't remember what the name of this one was but my mom stitched it for me um i believe it's a tra-la-la i think so pattern and if 
you like the frame, it's from Hobby Lobby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need a Hobby Lobby in Northern California. <laughs> the nearest cute. one is probably like two hours away from me. See how thick it is. We have a Michael's and Joanne's, but I wish we had a Hobby Lobby nearby. Maybe Jean can show some of the other things. Um, when she comes, she usually brings the things that she wants framed and and then um, I'll bring them back with me on the next trip. So, or either she'll take them home with her before she leaves, but she's got quite a few things she could show you. And um, one last thing, I mean, I, I forgot to mention these little pins. These are probably just another button company. No, no, they're not. They are Boutini Boutini. And those came from Needle and Haystack, so they had a selection of these. Back it up. Back it up. I'm back trying. Back it up. Back it up. I can't. It's just going to get worse. I'm trying to find it. There we go. There we go. Thank you. So I thought those would be cute in some of those little seasonal pin cushions. Um, Looks like scrabble pieces. It does. Letters. It's cute. So cute. <laughs> Well, um, I did want to mention, too, about um, when we mentioned Needle in a Haystack, the store's owner, um, Kathy, I can't remember Kathy's last name, she's actually featured on several floss tubes of Nickel Apartments, um, and Kathy is quite knowledgeable about different needlework fabrics and thread counts and the differences between them. And I always like to learn something new. And if you, I, I'll try to link that video below so that you can watch that. Actually, she's featured in several of Nicola's videos. And um, so if you're interested in, I believe there's one that talks about the differences between even weave and uneven weave and how you can tell uh, before you start a project. And I mentioned I like to do really big projects. You don't want to be in the middle of one of those and just learn that you figured the fabric count wrong or um, have a mistake there and run off the edge, which happens sometimes. Thankfully, it's never happened to me yet, but I'll link that. And also wanted to mention that I learned through Nicola's videos with Kathy that Kathy does jewelry she solders i guess it's um i think it's i think they're sterling silver pendants and she actually had some pieces that she had stitched over one on 40 count that you could buy already stitched um and put in to the the, the pendants and they're just absolutely beautiful and i talked to her about that about maybe doing that for me and how do, I, how do I go about that? And what's that process? And so essentially it's, um, you know, you contact her and discuss it and give her dimensions and a lot of um, back and forth messages via email and she's able to work with you on that. But I just thought they were beautiful and, um, and um, anyway, I'll put a link to, uh, a video where she talks about that that she actually does the jewelry see you next time um probably be seeing you in arkansas um i may or may not get a video up before then and until then see you later bye bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.